Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes, tamu sana. Earlier today, Meru Senator Linturi was arrested over his remarks yesterday in Eldoret. The Madoadoa remarks. But ironically, regarding Ashagwa has come in the defense of Linturi, an indication that regarding Ashagwa sees no fault at all by Linturi making those remarks yesterday. Yes. So in this video, I want us to have a look at regarding Ashagwa's defense of Linturi, after which, as usual, we are going to dissect to see exactly where the truth lies. Listen in to regarding Ashagwa. This morning, I was asked from the DCI. It's just a continuation of that harassment and persecution. All of us, including you from the media, were at the Eldoret Club and the utterances of the distinguished senator of Peru. I will record you. And uh, the senator, just like ourselves, appealed to the people of said issue to get rid of leaders through the ballot who are opposed to William Ruto and the UTA bottom up one of the border. In fact, some of us were very specific about those leaders. But Senator Inturi spoke generally about uh, leaders who are opposed to the deputy president and asked the voters to clean up the area politically by voting them out. And that is what it was. Yes. That's regarding Ashagwa earlier today. And from the way Rikandi Gashago is trying to talk, he's just cleverly, indirectly trying to say that Linturi has been arrested because he supports William Ruto. And that's not something new, because any time we have seen Tangatanga -tanga leaders being arrested, whether of corruption or whichever, they always say they are being arrested because of, the, of their support for William Ruto. But is that really the case, ladies and gentlemen? That's what I want us to find out in this video. So if in case you've just bumped here for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. And before we dig into our analysis, let's have a look at a short clip of some proceedings at The Hague over this term, Madoadoa. Listen into this. At the time in question, where ethnic, where derogatory terms traded between ethnic groups, the people, eth members of one ethnic group called the others names that were not flattering. The Caribbean people, and this came when the election was about to, used it to refer to Kikuyus as Madoa Doa. Yes, that was a proceeding that happened in the Hague based court. And you can see from that short clip that the term Madoa Doa was used very effectively to refer to the Kikuyu community or rather the Kikuyu nation in the Rift Valley. And Linturi was here in the year 2007. William Ruto was also here. And they know what that word Madoadoa actually means. What, where does the truth lie in all this, ladies and gentlemen? From where I sit, I tend to believe that it was not Linturi alone talking. Tanga Tanga, William Ruto and his team, they cleverly sat down and actually came up with that word Madoadoa. And they chose Linturi because Linturi comes from the mountain. So they chose Linturi to, the, to be the person who could utter such kind of a remarks. And their main ambition, or rather, what they wanted to achieve as a result of that was to coerce communities living in the Rift Valley or to force communities living in the Rift Valley to support William Ruto. Yes, they just wanted to intimidate communities living in the Rift Valley who most likely are not supporting William Ruto's bid to support William Ruto. They wanted to achieve that 
through coercion and intimidation. So why are they resorting to such kind of to such kind of a tactic? Why? I still believe, ladies and gentlemen, that William Ruto, from where he sits, he knows for a fact that his chances of winning the presidency come August are becoming slim and slimmer each passing day. William Ruto and his team, they already know that if Kenyans are allowed to vote or to choose their leadership in a sober environment without intimidation, without coercion, William Ruto knows he will lose a very good chunk of the Rift Valley support because we all know Rift Valley is a cosmopolitan area. There are so many communities in the Rift Valley. So William Ruto and this team, they want to coerce. They want to intimidate. They want to force all these communities in the Rift Valley to support William Ruto. And they are doing, doing that using threats. Because in the event there are no threats, then Kenyans in the Rift Valley will just make informed decisions soberly. And in the event they make such decisions soberly, William Ruto sees no option, no chance of being voted for by a good majority of other communities in the Rift Valley. And I'm saying that because a good majority of Kenyans, again, still believe that William Ruto is very corrupt. A good majority at the back of their mind, they have that feeling. They know William Ruto is a very corrupt leader. And in the year 2018, and I know some Kenyans might have not forgotten this, Kenyans were asked a very simple question. A very simple question. Who do you think is the most corrupt Kenyan alive? And a majority of Kenyans, 33%, of those who were surveyed, ranked William Ruto as the most corrupt Kenyan alive. He was followed second, closely or rather in the second position by Anwai Guru at, at 31%. That was in the year 2018. So Kenyans up to today, I know things have not changed much. Kenyans still view William Ruto as being a very corrupt leader. Kenyans see William Ruto's integrity as being questioned. So in a sober environment, without intimidation, without force, William Ruto knows that a good majority of Kenyans will not prefer voting for him. They want to use intimidation to force Kenyans into voting for him. What does that show us about Ruto and this team calling itself Tagatanga? That only shows one thing, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a team that are not yet ready they are not yet mature enough to take the national leadership of this country. They still have some skeletons in their closet. William Ruto, I'm one person who has been very, very consistent. And I challenge any person here to be keenly listening to William Ruto. William Ruto, out of his speeches, or rather from his speeches, he's coming out as an insider. You will hear him talking about what we Watu wa kurusha mawe. William Ruto there is just trying to profile the local community, but he's doing that very cleverly. So his foot soldiers in this case, the likes of Linturi, Rigadi Gashagwa, the Ali Suaomi, Dindinyoro, all these people are just trying to copy from their master. And also some few days ago, we also saw Cleophas Malala, who has now who has things done today is seemingly joining William Ruto. He also started such kind of a debate in Western by saying that Raila should hold his rallies in Kondele, the same kind of ethnic profiling of some communities. So from where I sit, I tend to believe, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a group that only thrives when there is violence. And that's exactly what they are trying to do. They want to cause violence. They want to create violence so that Kenyans cannot vote for their candidates or have their preferred leaders soberly. They want Kenyans to vote out of fear or out of intimidation. And they are just cleverly trying to force communities in the Rift Valley to vote for William Ruto. Because failure to that, they just want to threaten them that the consequences might be dire. So from where I sit, I tend to believe 
that the Kenyan government, our beloved president, the security law enforcers should actually be very firm on this road. If it's the sympathy they want, if they want to be arrested in order to get that sympathy, so be it. They should be arrested. Let them get that sympathy. Because from where I sit, I tend to believe that that sympathy will just be a temporary sympathy. Okay? As, as time goes by, that's a sympathy that will dissipate and will dissipate very, very fast. That sympathy will in the long run turn out to be hate. Kenyans will open up their eyes to see that that's not a leader worth being sympathized with. So from where I see it, I tend to believe that this is a group out to divide Kenyans along ethnic lines. This is a group out to cause division in Kenya. And they are doing that because they have seen their graph. Their graph is declining. They are losing popularity. Mm. They are losing popularity. So they are bitter. Mm. They are bitter. They want Kenyans to be confused. Yes, this is a team that is bitter. And as I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, it's my humble appeal to my beloved countrymen Fellow Kenyans, it's only, it's less than eight months to the election itself. Kenyans should not vote out of intimidation or out of fear. But Kenyans should be sober to elect a leader based on his track record, his performance for the time he has been in government. It's upon Kenyans now to choose who is the best leader who can actually take this country to the next level. But Kenyans should not make that decision out of fear or out of coercion or emotion. But they should make that decision very, very soberly. And just as I did indicate when we were starting, if you've just bumped here for the very first time, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. Give it a like, please. To any other person watching us outside Kenya for the very first time, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. Again, to any other person who is also a fan of ours here, but you have not yet subscribed, take this moment right now, tap on the subscription button and also on the notification bell to receive a notification anytime we upload, we upload a new video. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu.